Hey guys, today we are going to look at some card prices. And these cards are kind of matte cards, but they are on the reserve list. So I'm going to probably label this video reserve list cards that are really bad, but still go up in price. We will start with this one, Brain Geyser, which is from Revised. This card is on the reserve list. We have seen better cards in this one in recent sets. And there's no reason that this card should be over $5. But being that it is on the reserve list, yeah, let's make it five bucks. You can see the trend. So revised is the print sample of revised versus unlimited is huge. Way more revised cards exist than unlimited. I think it's like 10 to one or something like, it's either five to one, 10 to one, or 15 to one. I don't remember. I read it in the Inquest magazine a while back. But there's so much more re revised cards than unlimited. And unlimited cards have already started going up in price. Revised is still kind of meh, 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 meh. Uh, but could it go up in price? There are some several good reserve list cards on in revised. So we kind of always keep talking about what an old set means. Previously, it was black border. Then it became unlimited. Now it's revised. That is pretty crazy to me. Now, will it ever be like fifth edition or fourth edition or something like that? Maybe, maybe not. But as long as it's Urza's legacy, I think my cutoff is, my absolute cutoff between cards you should not buy is Urza's legacy or uh, anything newer than Urza Block, because they don't have reserve list cards in them. Now, any set like Urza's Legacy, Urza's Destiny, Urza's Saga obviously has the Cradle, which is really good. Good. They are good, because even having boxes of them, or having tournament packs, booster packs, they should hold value very nicely as collector's items. All right, let's take a look at this. This card has been far outclassed by any number of dragons that do the same, same ability. I mean, let's talk about it. You pay five, shuffle your library so you don't get to brainstorm or do anything like that and reveal the top card. Until end of turn, as long as the card remains on top of your library, you may pay the card although it was in your hand without paying its casting cost. Again, the problem with this card is you cannot manipulate the top of your library. Now, there are many dragons, many blue, white, blue, red dragons that have similar effects to this. But they don't cost five to activate. And to boot, you also get a dragon. Why is this card over $3? Answer, reserve list. That's it. There's no other explanation to it. All right, let me let me show you a really crappy card. It is called Nova. What's it called? Nova Nova Pentacle. I barely can read it. The text is so bad. It's about fifteen dollars right now. It is a rare, and it is on the reserve list from Legends. That alone makes it fifteen dollars. Four, free tap it. Redirect damage done to you from one source to target creature of opponent's choice. Redirect damage done to you from one source, like maybe like a lightning bolt, another creature to target creature. So your opponent can pick your creature then, and then your creature dies. So what every magic player should be doing is they should be paying four mana for this and then hoping, keeping free mana open at all times so your opponent can pick off one of your creatures. Or if you don't have any creatures, I guess they would have to pick their own creature, but they would pick the one that they don't like the most. Very, very bad, very bulky, totally useless. This thing costs seven mana. <laughs> it's an investment of seven mana to do something where your opponent largely gets control of what they want to do. Does that sound like a good card today? If we reprint it, if we reprint this card today in Exxon, would this be valuable? Answer no. It would be laughed at. Like, it's just too expensive, too hard to keep that much mana open all the time, and I, I don't really know what deck would want to play this ever. 
All right, jihad. So by just saying that word, I have been demonetized. Triple red, enchantment, choose a color as long as opponent has cards of this color in play. All white creatures gain plus two, plus one. Jihad must be discarded immediately at any time opponent has no cards of that color in play. It's not a bad card, but is it a hundred dollar card? Answer no, it is not a hundred dollars. Today we have much, much better effects in this. Uh, we have the ability to give, I mean, the limitation on this is it gives your opponent interaction. That's not good. Plus it limits you to white creatures and being triple white, it's really hard to pull off and any other color than white. So if we reprinted this card, not that it would ever be reprinted with the same name, it would be barely playable. Maybe playable somewhat, but barely playable. There's lots of really good effects that give creatures plus two, plus two nowadays. And this one is too dependent on your opponent. I mean, against a control deck that doesn't have any permanents, that just wants to counter your stuff, and these control decks did exist back in the day, not worth the money. Now, was it worth the $10 it used to be? Yeah, probably, but it's not worth the $100 it is today. Reserve list. All right, now let's talk about the utmost ridiculous $2 card in existence. We have from the dark, not even a very good set. Triple green, quadruple green, target creature is regenerated for a 2-2. Let me read this again. Triple green to get 2-2 with pretty much no really good ability. Four, you need to keep four green mana open and to regenerate a creature. A ability that we don't even use that much in modern magic anymore. That's pretty much... When's the last time anyone regenerated a creature in the Pro Tour? Regeneration was a good ability, but it turns out that like just it, it didn't makes sense in terms of gameplay like if you kill something i expect it to die like or it'd be very difficult to bring back to life i think this card is really just the i look at it and i say to myself hmm who would pay two dollars for this card if this card was not on the reserve list this card would be burnt just for fun for all the green mana right it is just so bad. It is very ugly, kind of creepy. Actually, you know, like when I talk about like owning hundreds of copies of cards, I would not want to own multiple copies of this. It's just creepy. Like well, who would want to own hundred copy of this? Like who would even speculate on this? I'm like, yes, I get it. It's $2 now. I mean, I probably own them, but I'm not going to bring them up out or sell them. It's just too creepy. All right, now let's talk about random legends that are really bad from legends. Ramos Overdark, two, double black, double blue, so he costs six. What can we get with six mana today in standard? Hmm, giant dinosaurs that do a ton. What does this guy do? Destroy target a target creature which has an enchantment card played on it. So you're either placing enchantments on it yourself, which is, means you're one for one your opponent, or your opponent, your opponent is playing Boggles or some type of variant, which probably doesn't. It means that they're hexproof or they have Shroud, and you can't interact with them. Not so hexproof. Shroud wouldn't make any sense. That would defeat the purpose of Boggles. So, very strange. Very strange that this card. I mean, the artwork is fantastic. I do appreciate older Legends artwork. I think that they are very good and now they're being appreciated the way that they should be the artwork today from the new cards with the dinosaurs and stuff it sounds like a, it okay so i played magic when i was a little kid but i liked what i liked about magic was it felt very adult like to me and yes i know now i'm a grown-up and i'm looking at these dinosaurs and these pirates and these time travelers i'm like okay this is but when i play magic this was the dude like he's got the skulls and no, he's kind of scary looking. 
I mean, he's a pretty scary looking dude. I give you credit for that. All right. To end it off with the worst of the worst in terms of how is this card over $10? We have Sandals of Albadladar for Mono Artifact. It is a reserve. All these cards are on a reserve list, if you didn't know. And all of these cards are rares. Okay, you pay four. Then you pay two to give one creature island walk ability until end of turn, so it doesn't even last forever. And if that creature dies, then the sandals are gone. Let me repeat what this does. It costs four. Then it costs two to give something island walk. Island walk, as in your opponent needs an island for this card to ever be useful. And then if th that creature dies, you lose the sandals. This card is over $10. There is no MTG Finance Gods. There is only the reserve list. If it's on a reserve list and it hasn't spiked yet, buy, 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 buy. Buy all of them. Because there will be a time in the future where these little the quadruple green regenerated creature is going to be worth $2. I don't know how you sell it. I don't know how you trade it. But at least you'll feel good about it. And that's what MTG Finance really is about. It's not about making money. It's about showing off your massive collection more of a ton of money that no one wants to buy behind a paywall and maybe a podcast. That's it. Bye.